great jazz musician Duke Ellington once said, there's hardly any money interest in art. And music will be there when the money's gone. I wanted to change that. I mean, why shouldn't there be money in art? Humans would not survive without art or music. To me, it was as essential as food. So, we opened the casino in December 1938, just before war broke. People thought I was crazy, spending all that money on a jazz club in Warrington. But Melody Maker magazine said, and I quote, the casino takes its place among the swell joints of London's West End. There it is, in black and white. Oh, it was beautiful. Big place on Market Gate, ivory, cream and black decor, big murals of the greats. Duke Ellington, Maxine Sullivan, Count Basie, all looking down on us, the saints of jazz. Now, I was proud to bring a piece of those Harlem Knights to the Northwest. We made sure all armed forces got a discount. We supported the soldiers. We even rolled out the entire band to the air raid shelter to entertain the people. They loved it. We mattered. Now, if we could occupy people's minds, then we made some slight contribution towards helping them put on a brave front to Old Nasty. Then the American GIs came to town. 1942, they were stationed at Burtonwood. Now we'd had lots of RAF and British soldiers in the club before, never any trouble. Then this one night, the American GI starts to make demands that my club should be whites only. I mean, this idiot was shouting his mouth off about segregation while standing under a huge mural of Duke Ellington. I said, that is never gonna happen. So he starts attacking a young serviceman named Herbert for dancing with a local white girl. I mean, Herbert had been in the club before, but never had any trouble with him. He was quiet and diffident, a skilled technician from Jamaica. I said to the GI, if Herbert is fit to fight, then he is fit to mix. And if he didn't like it, he could go. A couple of weeks later, I get this letter from the US Army, Captain Lang. It's not our intention to dictate the policies of privately owned establishments, but that is a lie from the start. In the interest of eliminating trouble in which our troops will be involved, they'd appreciate my cooperation in prohibiting coloureds from attending the dances. If I didn't comply, they'd have no choice but to make my casino out of bounds to all US servicemen. I mean, why on earth did they think I was going to agree to this bull? I, I wrote back and I told them as much. I said, Herbert would always be welcome in my club. As long as he paid his admission and behaved with his usual good manners, the door would always be open. We weren't going to be bullied by the Americans. So we carried on. It was okay. Quite unexpectedly, things took a more sinister twist. The British military prohibited their servicemen too. We went from taking 50 pounds a week to five. I couldn't even afford to pay the band. I mean, they tried to give me the money back, but I wouldn't take it, I, I couldn't. Duke Ellington had two rules in life. Rule number one, never quit. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. I took them on. The British military didn't even acknowledge my letters, so I went for the government. So many of the good people of Warrington backed me. I received a lot of letters of support. That is why Warrington will always hold a special place in my heart. I asked them to write to Mr. Goldie, our local MP, and we pressurised him to ask the government for a reason why we all knew the answer. This was a colour bar. If you go to the jazz clubs in London, there's no colour bar. They're not segregated, just us. I took it all the way to the House of Commons. We were fighting this war for the freedoms of men. They were expecting British subjects to die for this country and wanting me and my staff to say they couldn't come into our establishment. It's not fair. That isn't what jazz is about. If it wasn't for the coloreds, this culture wouldn't even exist. Can you imagine a world without jazz? I got my questions to the House of Commons and that spineless Secretary of State for War, Sir Percy Cribb, said it was due to overcrowding. Overcrowding isn't a military concern, it's a civil concern for the police to deal with. I mean, we tried to ride it out. 
prayed the war would end and the Americans would go back home. And then the brutes called me up, drafted me into the army. It was a vendetta. What had I done? Is it because I was a Jew? You tell me. On account of now, me being a British serviceman, I by rights couldn't even go in my own club. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat. Racking my brains trying to think of a way out of this. In the end, there was nothing I could do. Everything we had worked so hard for was gone. Just like that. They couldn't stop the music though. I mean, we left a legacy. So many local jazz musicians came out at that time and I know they still play in dance halls up and down the country today. I guess the old Duke was right. Even when the money's gone, the music was still there. <laughs>